Okay, in this video, we're going to look at making this swept name display. So the features we're going to use in SolidWorks to create this is just some basic uh, SolidWorks features, some sketch features, some new ones, some so drawn text and an arc. We're also going to learn how to create a plane. So we have our three standard planes, our front, top and right plane, but sometimes we want to have a different plane at an angle or at a different different height or different position so we'll learn how to do that today and we'll also look at doing a swept boss base so what to do a swept boss base what we need is a sketch and we also need a path to sweep that sketch along so we'll learn how to do all that today so going to SolidWorks we set up our part our part and again it's a part file it's not an assembly or drawn or anything like that and we save our part as normal so this time we're gonna we have our couple of planes so this time we're going to start off on our right plane because what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to kind of do two and one here we're going to draw the path for our sweep and we're also going to do is we're going to create some points that we can use to reference to create our plane so hopefully hopefully you can follow along with me and just trust me in this <laughs> so starting off we start off our sketch what we want to do first now is, if we go back to our image, we want to get the angle of this surface. So to, in order to create the plane, we need to know what angle it is. So it doesn't, isn't really important for this object. It's, you can have your own angle, but I, I find 65 degrees is a nice angle. So I'm going to just do this with construction lines because they're not really important lines, like so. So I'm just going to draw a line out like so, and I'm going to also draw another line out like this make him horizontal and I'm just going to dimension that angle to about 65 degrees like so next thing I'm going to do is and again you're going to have to trust me with this is draw a line down like so and I want that line to be the same angle as this line so what I'm going to do is hold control select the two and make them like so. So the next thing I want to do is to mention out these lines. So and again, try and make sure that your dimension line is the same angle as your construction line. So we will make that uh, about 12 mil, and I'm going to make this line about 4 mil. And green tick. So the last thing I want to do is draw an arc. So to draw a center a center point arc, I'm going to click the point. I'm going to zoom in a wee bit here, and I'm going to click this top point, and then I'm going to drag that down till it reaches this center line down here. So that's that done. So I can go close sketch. And now what I want to do is create a line out here. So then I can create, I need three reference points for my plane. So then if I have a point here, point here, and a point here, that'll fully define my plane. So you'll understand that's a bit better in a minute. So what we want to do now is go to our front plane. So that's why it's very important that we're working on our origin because we need these points to kind of be coherent and, and touch. So those points are, that point here is on the front plane or is on the origin point and we know all of these point planes are connected by one point which is the origin point so again we're going with the front plane and we're going to go normal to and then we're going to go start sketch and all I'm going to do here is draw a construction line again from the origin point out horizontal it doesn't matter what length this point is it's just to give us reference points so close sketch again as you can see here, what I have are just three points. That through, those three points would be very useful. So now, going back to what we were talking about again, now we want to create the plane. So if we go exit out of every sketch, we go up to features, and we go reference geometry and plane. So now I want to select these three points. So select one, two, three. There you can see it is fully defined. If we didn't have enough points, we won't fully define and it won't create the plane. So there we have our 
plane like so. What that does is it gives us this surface now to create a sketch to write our text on. So we needed this sloping surface to, to create our sketch. So now go back into our, so select our plane, go normal too, so that looks in 90 degrees to it. And we're going to start writing our text now. So again, I'm going to go with a midpoint line this time, and then I'm going to make a construction. Why midpoint? Because when I dimension this out, it'll stay perfectly centered on my piece. So again, going from the origin, and I'm just going to draw them out like so. Now, when we're making making these pieces, I'd like them to be just roughly about 80 mil. So just to mention out that line there. So now we have our line. And the reason why we drew a line is because when we write text, it needs a curve or it needs a line, like same as you would write in a copy book, to follow along. So what we've done here is we made it a line for the text to follow along. So now just select that line and now enter your text. So I'm not going to be, you can put a name or anything you want to do it. I'm just going to go A, B, C, D. E, F, G, like so. Next thing we want to do is grab our little scroll down arm here and come down to the bottom. We're gonna make, we want to make changes to our text. We can see here it's way too small. We want it to be this side. So we're gonna untick that and we're gonna go font. And the next thing we want to do is we want to adjust the size. So I'm just gonna delete this out. That tells us it was 3.5 mil. We want our text to be much bigger, so I'm going to go with 11 mil. We'll try 11. 11 isn't too bad, but I don't like this font. It's a bit thin. So what I could do is make it bold, which improves it again, but I still think it's a bit thin, so I'm going to just look for a font that's a bit thicker. I think I have one in mind down here. Like this one here, like so. So now it's it's really filling my whole 80 mil distance here. I'm also going to select that text and center it like so, and I can go green tick. So now, if we remember back to what our final thing we were going to do is we were going our feature we're going to new feature we're going to learn today is our swept boss space, and to do a swept boss space, if we remember before, we need a sketch or a, path, a profile and we also need a path that we can draw this along so going to our two sketches we have our path our profile here with our text and then we go and we get our path which is our curve line here and what that does is it sweeps it down along that path like so So, as you can see here, and I've done this on purpose, it failed. Why? Because I didn't account for, so my text is lying on this line. And if you think about the geometry, it isn't physically un impossible for this text to curve down along this arc. So, I'm going to go back in, and another little thing we're going to learn today is how to edit the sketch after we've closed it. So, I'm going to edit sketch. This time, I'm going to delete this curve because it's not on the right angle. So now I'm going to go from this point down here. And that's why I put this in before. So and what I want to do is sweep an arc from this ed edge here. Why? Because then that allows four mil of a bottom curve. And if we look back on here, it allows space for it to curve down down here. If we hadn't done that, there was no, if we were, what we were doing was we were drawn from here and we were expecting this shape to curve down would no radius at all to turn on, which wasn't going to work because it's geometry was impossible. So this time again, so I'm going to draw a line out from this point now, like so. I'm going to make it horizontal. And again, this time, go back to my arc, select this point now instead, up to this point, and swing them down, like so. So now I can exit this sketch again. And now I should be able to sweep my, my surface. So go sweep, select my path, or my profile, sorry. And now I need to select my path, like so. 
as you can see, it works out perfectly. So now I have my object swept along my path. So the last thing I want to do, I want to create a base for this to stand on. So I like the kind of freeform shape. It look, kind of looks like it's melting into the ground. So that's what I'm going to go with. You can have a square base, you can have any kind of base you want. So the first thing I want to do is just hide the sketch just because it's a bit confusing. So I, I want it to start on this bottom surface here. So what I could do is I could go reference geometry plane and select this edge here. And I could go coincident and then green tick. When that is done has created a plane on this surface here. I could quite as easily and say the trouble just select this face and I can start a sketch on this face here. But seeing that I have the plane, I am gonna use this plane. And I don't need to stretch it out or drag it out like so. But some people find that helps. It's just the same as thinking you're drawing on a page. So I'm going to select this page and I'm going to go normal to. Now what I want to do is draw just a spline with a rough freeform kind of shape here. So I'm just going to keep it away from my right in a wee bit. Just keep it out from it a wee bit here. And I'm just drawing fairly rough. You can do a bit more detail if you want. I just want to make it kind of look like it's melting into the into onto a hot plate or something like that, like so. So green tick. Now what I want to do is just extrude that up. So again, hold down your little scroll toggle, and then drag your mouse, and then you can twist this object around just so you can see a bit better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of this extrude, so it's actually extruding down now. I want to extrude it up, so I'm going to go hit these little reverse direction arrows over here. Got that done. Let's change that. So I'm happy enough with 2 mil. It is 2 mil here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, turn on the draft. So what I'm going to do is change the angle of this a wee bit. So what th this does is it puts kind of a chamfer on the edge of my object. So what I'm going to do here is just increase this as much as I can because I want again want this to kind of look like it's melting in the ground and I'm, it's it's probably not going to let me so all I do is keep knocking it back till it allows me because the sharp angles of the curve I've just created it can't physically chamfer them so you just keep clicking back till you can get it to chamfer the sharper the angles the harder it is to chamfer like so. So there I have my object and if we look back that's us done. So what have we done today? We've learned how to insert text and an arc feature in sketches. We've learned how to create a plane and we've also learned how to sweep a path space. So again what do we need? We needed a profile and a path to follow along. That's it for today's video. Thank you.